Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and in the shop. But we're kind of, oh yeah, I'm kind of tanned. Working outside, tanned, it's hot out. In the shop today, uh, today is going to be a quick one. It is to replace a radio in my van with one that has Bluetooth. Um, this one's got Bluetooth, it's got a hard drive, it's got, I can call off of it. Uh, the current radio I have in the van now has a bunch of wires that I can hook on for Bluetooth and it gets keep getting caught in my uh, beverage tray and falling and pain in the butt. So I upgraded, it's not a huge upgrade, but it's, it's enough. It doesn't have nav on it, but it has everything else. So Bluetooth, CD player, I believe it can be connected to a hard drive. It's got aux, it's got a USB for charging, all that fun stuff. So it's very easy to put in, but this is one of the catches. If you have a Chrysler vehicle and you're replacing a radio, especially one that has a screen, nav, whatever, I found this out because I already put it in and plugged it in and it gave me a you need a code to unlock such radio. So, in that aspect, you have to call Chrysler's. You have to give them the serial number, which in my case is this one right here. And you have to give them your VIN on what vehicle it's going into. And then they give you a code to unlock it. So, I got a code. We will see if it works. I haven't tried it yet. Um, you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, leave me a comment. This is going to be a little bit, I'm going to keep jumping around on stuff, on projects, uh, when stuff gets available. The next will be probably the fog lights, which are currently being dealt with. So let's get started. I'll show you how to take the old one out, put the new one in, and let's see how quick, it, quick and easy. Oh, the only tool you're really going to need is a Phillips. That's it. Phillips screwdriver. And don't lose the screws. So let's get started. Okay, I apologize for the light. Um, I'm on the shady side of the garage and it's kind of dark. It's not too bad, but still apologize. So, here's my old radio. And it's good, pretty easy to get out. There's this little plate here, grab it on the top and you kind of work it around to pop it out. Just like that. Just a bunch of clips. Just don't force it. Be gentle. And we have four screws. Two here, two there. So let's take them out. And don't lose them. Okay, four screws are out. Pull the radio out. Little wiggling is necessary. So radio comes out, and all you have on the back are two clips. Two clips and that's it. One is a regular DIN plug, one is for your antenna. Simple. So let's plug the new one in and see if she fires up. Okay, moment of truth, peoples. Let's see if my code works. Okay. 
FM. Coming out soon. Brett just don't have to. There he is. Up. Pretty simple. So all it is is just doing the same thing in reverse. Put your screws in, put your plate on, you're done. That's it, let's go in the garage. So that's pretty much it. Um, it's working, it's connected, it's the only thing it's not doing, and I think I know why. Uh, Bluetooth is not connecting, uh, it says it's unavailable. And I have a feeling, because this radio was in there, which is not Bluetooth compatible, on my steering wheel, on the left hand side of my steering wheel, we'll have a uh, cluster. It'll have a switch for um, talking to the radio and answering a phone call off the steering wheel. I don't have that switch. So that's where I think Bluetooth's not gonna, gonna, not gonna connect. So all I gotta do is just get that switch and swap it out because it's just a blank in there right now. Other than that, it is a pretty easy switch. Um, less than five minutes to do it. No big deal. So Hope everyone's good. This is a short one. I don't want to drag people through everything. And I got a neighbor that just keeps rubbing his motorcycle for like an hour. So lovely, I'm gonna let this go. So, hope everyone's good. Like and share and subscribe and I'll see you next time.